right, hi. So let's talk about the semiconductor equations that we'll be using uh, throughout the remainder of this course in some more detail. We've derived these equations before. Well, we've stated some of those. Um, I'll uh, try to highlight some aspects of them at first, and then we'll dive into some analytical solutions to these equations, and then into some numerical approaches as well. So let's start out with these uh, equations here. There is the continuity equation for electrons. We had derived it that uh, relates the change of electrons as a function of time to a spatial change of the current density and a recombination and generation. The equivalent term is the equi um, continuity equation for holes. The Poisson equation here at the bottom is really Gibbs's law and we adopt it to the semiconductor world where we talk about holes, electrons, donors, and acceptors as the charges that we consider in this Poisson equation. Now these equations are the state, uh, the standard modeling technology today. If you go and um, start modeling these devices um, that are larger scale, um, you will be using a drift diffusion type models like these. They may be calibrated to some other more modern technology that is uh, now replacing the quantum transport on these nanoscale devices. So these equations were uh, the state of the art 20 years ago and they're standard technology today. Today's state of the art is really based on the non-equilibrium non green function technology. Uh, Supriyo Data at Purdue really introduced it to the field to, uh, of electrical engineering and uh, gave it widespread use. And I have been involved in building the first uh, industrial strength simulation tools that uh, model these devices on an atomistic level uh, with these NEGF equations. So nevertheless, in this course, we will be fo focusing on these equations that are really standard modeling technology. And as I started to mention is that these um, uh, standard technologies might fit their parameters like mobility, etc., to more sophisticated models because these advanced models really require much more compute time to, uh, for uh, larger devices to compute and, and that may not be realistic for all of the experiments, numerical experiments one might want to conduct. So we'll dive into these ex expressions here and I just remind you that these continuity equations um, are uh, uh, really describing uh, uh, aspects that are always valid. Uh, they are described conservation laws. So these don't change on the details of the device, but they're really a conservation law similar to energy conservation or momentum conservation. The uh, Poisson equation is Gauss's law. And, um, that, of course, holds for macroscopic type entities, but if you need to uh, deal with strongly correlated systems where you need to account for electron-to-electron -electron interactions on a one-to-one -one basis where the, uh, there, uh, a mean field theory is not quite appropriate, then you need to uh, maybe replace aspects of the solution that you pursue uh, with Poisson equation. And uh, I had mentioned in the past that Coulomb blockade might be such a, um, an, uh, a physical phenomenon that you need to treat uh, uh, outside of the Poisson uh, expressions in uh, specific, uh, specific careful treatments of, of electron-electron interactions. All right, and finally, we have the drift and the diffusion e uh, expressions, and they really... Um, need to be, uh, can be used, they're standard being used as I mentioned, but they are being modified when there is no scattering in um, nanoscale devices or you need fundamental quantum transport me uh, methodologies. So we might uh, solve uh, different uh, transport exp uh, expressions such as the NGF approach for these expressions. Nevertheless, in this course, uh, for fundamentals, we'll do, use these drift and diffusion elements. Now, let's uh, look at the continuity uh, equation, and let's um, at least um, try to justify where this, these expressions come from. And we'll use a, an analogy that is pretty good. 
So consider a body of water, and you have uh, water flowing in and out of this body of water, and you might have rain coming in, so adding water into the system, and you might have evaporation. In many ways, this is what we have also in semiconductors, of course, uh, in a different way, but it describes, the, it's a continuity expression. So uh, there's a rate of increase at the water lake, an inflow that consists of an inflow and an outflow, uh, a rain that can add, and evaporation where you have outflow. All right, so let's consider this for semiconductors, for the device that we have, are interested in. Let's assume we have some arbitrarily shaped device, and we imagine that we can uh, consider some uh, structure A where we divide the structure into smallish cubes. And we, we imagine we can subdivide our system like that. There's a couple of uh, important things that we need to consider for the subdivision. These, thing, these boxes can't actually be too small. And they need to be large enough that the concepts like an effective mass, the mobility, st would still be true in this system. So there is a built-in assumption when we use the, these equations and the approaches that uh, strong scattering uh, close to local equilibrium are still valid. If you are outside of the validity of the system, you might have to use uh, Boltzmann transport or quantum transport equations to really uh, tackle the transport problem. But here, we're going to assume that these boxes are still large enough. And for each of these boxes, but we can assume that there is a, a, a carrier flow that is uh, going in and out uh, of uh, the boxes, as indicated here in red, say at an open surface, and that there is an, a number of electrons in the box that we can measure, and there may be a, re a generation and recombination in that box as well. So that the generation rate we might measure as well in uh, per cubic centimeter per second, and it might be an external process such as light that is inducing this, uh, these carriers. We have talked in the past about recombinations in the system. That will have to be a process that's allowable in here, and all these um, interactions have to kind of fit into the box and obey again um, a, a, a mean field type of approach. Okay, so um, now we want to relate all of these factors that come into a, a, a box like this. And the strategy is very simple. It's, it's very classical. It's that uh, the, number of, the, the rate of change of number of electrons inside the central box is equal to the number of electrons coming in minus the number of electrons going out at the interface plus so the number of electrons getting generated by an external force, like light, with a generation rate, minus the number of electrons that are recombining per second, governed by some recombination rate. So it's truly a classical um, uh, rate equation that is uh, being depicted here. All right, and that really gets us to, to the interpretation of this expression here, right? So you have a rate of change of electrons in that box, uh, with an open sur surface size A, you have electrons flowing in, you have electrons flowing out on the right, and you have, they have a charge, you have a, a number of carriers that in the box of length X are being generated with a, a generation coefficient, and another uh, box of electrons that are recombining, uh, vanishing out of this box, also at a, at a length X. You uh, divide this through and put it on a different in a differential form and voila you really just have this simple continuity equation for electrons okay so this is the continuity around electron flow out of this conceptual box that's it very classical view all right so you can do this for electrons i'm sure you can imagine to do the same thing for holes no, uh, no real complication here. Um, usually the generation and recombination rates for electrons and holes are the same since they're connected, since they sort of destroy each other. So you can uh, connect the rates. All right.
So, here they are, uh, the ex uh, uh, equations we had just discussed. Uh, now we put, have them in place. Now we're going to have some uh, strategies of solving them. There's really two methodologies, uh, uh, one numerical and one analytical. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll use, uh, the, in the next section, the analytical approaches to solve these expressions and to give you some insight as to uh, how to solve these expressions and what uh, insights you can gain on the overall behavior of electrons in such uh, devices. So I'll see you at the next section.